Mr. Mullen. Herbert? May I call you that? I want to talk. I want to help. No, you don't. Why do you think that? You're only here to diagnose my sanity. I'm here to understand. Let's talk about your father. He's a military man? How's your relationship with your father? Father was a Marine Corps sergeant and was used to ordering people to kill. Did he ever order you? I feel I was under my father's control like a robot. Why do you think your father gave you these orders? Father's a murderer. That's a serious accusation, Herb. You need to check my father's fingerprints against evidence found in Oregon and California murder cases since 1925. Um, let's, let's talk about your childhood. You need to contact my attorneys. Why? You have to tell them. They need to retrieve my father's fingerprints. Herb, there's no evidence that your father's a killer. He is. He told me to kill those people. His voice told me that it was necessary. My parents are killjoy reincarnationalists. And this makes you angry? Yes. They believe that by spoiling the enjoyment of others, they would improve their birth position in the next life. Father threatened anyone who would play with me. He told the neighbors to ignore me. You were raised Catholic, correct? The teachings of Catholicism are a lie. Why do you believe that? They told me that Jesus Christ, the person, actually lives in the Holy Eucharist. It is a lie. It is designed to induce naivete and gullibility in children. How do you feel about this? It makes them susceptible to receive and carry out telepathic subconscious suicide orders. Did you ever receive these orders? No, I, I received different from my father. Why did you receive different orders? You read in the Bible about Jonah? Yeah, I'm familiar with the tale. There was 12 men on the boat. Jonah was in the boat and it was like Jesus and Jonah stood up and said, God damn, if someone doesn't die, you know, all 13 of us are going to die. And he jumped overboard and he drowned. The sea, about half an hour or so, calmed down. Herb, Jonah was pushed in. And he didn't die because some whale spit him out. I'm asking you to swallow this Jonah story 
and believe that a minor natural disaster will prevent a major natural disaster. What major natural disaster? It's an earthquake. Why do you think an earthquake will occur? Think about it. If you were to prepare a chronology of the world's wars and famines and compare it to a list of major earthquakes throughout history, you would see that when the death rate goes up, the number of earthquakes go down. What about the deaths in Vietnam? It was enough to forestall. With the war winding down, sacrifices must be made. Why didn't you sacrifice yourself like Jonah? Albert Einstein sacrificed himself so that I may take my position as the savior of my generation. How do you know these people wish to be sacrificed? The die song. What's that? You see, the thing is people get together, say, in the White House. People like to sing the die song. If I was the president of my class when I graduate high school, I can tell two, maybe three young males to die. I can sing them that song and they would kill themselves, be killed in an automobile accident, a knifing, a gunshot wound. Why? They would have to do that in order to protect the ground from an earthquake because all the other people in the community had died all year long. In my class, we have to chip in, so to speak, to the darkness. We'd have to die also. And people would rather sing the die song than murder. Why do you think people would rather sing? I believe that man believed in reincarnation for maybe consciously, verbally, maybe 10,000 years. And so they instituted this law. What law? They let a guy go kill crazy. He'd go kill crazy maybe 20 or 30 people. And then they'd lynch him or have another person kill him. Why? What does this have to do with reincarnation? Because they don't want him to get too powerful in the next life.